These are the art supplies that still haunt me. They seduce you with promises of perfection, only to transform into nightmares from the shadowy depths of hell. <coughs> oh, gosh, let's turn that off. And on this stormy night, I have not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. Five haunting stories to keep you up at night. What was that? Chapter one, Bubble Bubble, Toil and Trouble. Our first story is a tale of betrayal, and it brings us to a dark evening several years ago. I had a deadline, so I needed to work swiftly. A client had asked me to paint a map of Paris. So there I was, painting frantically to capture the details of the Louvre, the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, and all of Paris's wonderful landmarks. I needed to incorporate the many streets and boulevards into the design, which is why I needed to use masking fluid to retain the pristine white of my paper as I worked on the background. I had... Why is this upside down? <laughs> I had a brand new bottle of Daniel Smith masking fluid. This, I thought, was exactly what I needed. Daniel Smith, after all, had a reputation for outstanding art supplies, and their watercolors were among my favorite. Many other artists had spoken highly of this fluid, so I felt assured that I had nothing to fear. This masking fluid had a special applicator and a fine tip, which to me seemed like a good idea. So I got to work trying to mask the fine lines for my streets, my avenues, my details. But just like that, the first bubble popped out and to my terror, the bubbles didn't vanish. Instead, they transformed into small stubborn blobs that seemed to multiply upon my page. I can just let them dry and remove them afterwards, I thought to myself, but this masking fluid had other diabolical plans. As I tried to remove them, the blobs burst, and as the masking fluid smeared across the page, I fought valiantly for what seemed like an eternity before realizing that my efforts were futile. Without a doubt, this masking fluid was worth neither the toil nor the trouble. Anyone else hear that? Chapter two, the dagger that broke my heart. Allow me to tell a tale of love gone awry, a story brimming with heartbreak and despair. The object of my ill-fated affection was none other than the silver dagger brush, a bewitching apparition that first crossed my path upon the hallowed grounds of Instagram. It was a love affair that at the outset had all the signs of destiny, I, consumed by an insatiable desire, knew I had to have it. My eagerness to use it was undeniable. What could be a more fitting subject than a floral still life to conjure up feelings of romance? However, as I embarked on the journey of realizing my vision, a certain truth revealed itself. This brush, this silver dagger, was a curse. I was simply not equipped to conquer. In the cruel light of reality, the bristles were far too long, unnaturally supple, and disconcertingly unfamiliar. You could hardly use it to paint a straight line. Like a bad boyfriend, it was unreliable and full of false promises. But I was smitten, and I didn't want to give up. The brush was soft enough that one would expect it to hold a lot of water, and thinking it might work better on a different subject, I tried to use it to paint ballerina tutus. It did nothing of the sort. It was wild and out of control. What started off as a beauty quickly descended into complete and utter anarchy. And just like that, a sweet romance quickly became a dagger to the heart. Oh, did you feel that? Oh, it feels so cold, so cold. Chapter three, fair is foul and foul is fair. This story involves a deeply disturbing mystery, one that still haunts me to this very day. 
I was creating a series of spot illustrations for what was to become my best-selling ballet alphabet. I thought I had everything I needed, but in order to create the flat graphic shapes on my illustrated alphabet, I needed a very wide range of acrylic paints. But lo and behold, I needed some new convenience mixtures to make sure that my colors stayed identical throughout the process. So I decided to order Blick Fluid Acrylics in a few colors, a lovely Robin's Egg Blue, a peachy pink, a few bottles of burgundy, and what appeared to be a lovely complex mustard color. Having already tried Blix acrylics and loving them, I thought that I was golden. Not so fast. As I opened them up, everything seemed fine until I reached the mustard. I knew something was amiss. All at once, the scent overcame me like a noxious cloud of despair. It was a smell so putrid, so utterly vile, that it seemed impossible that it could emanate from something as innocuous as a bottle of acrylic paint. My initial reaction was to recoil in disgust, but my curiosity got the better of me, and I leaned in to investigate further. The color inside the bottle was indeed the complex hue, but the odor, oh the odor, was unlike anything I had ever encountered. It was a mixture of rancid butter, sulfur, and something unidentifiable, but undeniably sinister. I hesitated, torn between my determination to complete my project and an overwhelming sense of foreboding. Against my better judgment, I dipped a small brush into the foul-smelling paint. An eerie sensation washed over me like a wave of icy dread. The pigment swirled and separated. I had to put it down. Could it have been a bad batch? I called customer service, thinking that it was simply a fluke. I asked them to send me a new bottle, which they did immediately. When it arrived, I opened it at once. But, alas, it was completely and utterly foul. I began to wonder what was wrong with this paint. Why was it so repulsive? What was wrong with these putrid potions? Well, it turns out that no one knows for sure, but rumors abound. Many have concluded that a paint maker once disappeared in a vat of vermilion, and his soul still haunts the halls of Blick. Regardless, I promise you that there is nothing more foul than this mustard hue. Chapter 4. Swamp Monster. <laughs> Legend has it that within the murky depths of these pigment-filled tubes lies a treacherous creature just waiting to pounce and pull you under its dark currents. Reeves watercolors. These seductive hues beckon you, offering more colors than your artistic soul could ever truly have, all cloaked beneath an irresistibly low price tag. In the twilight of my 20s, I ventured into my local art store, my guard inexplicably down, as the siren call of that low price called upon me. Against all better judgments and forgetting everything I had ever learned, I fell victim to the Reeves spell and I took the bait. Yet, I share my tale of folly to shield you from repeating my fatal mistake. I ran home well, walked, but this was New York. A New York walk is basically a jog anywhere else in the world. Unscrewed the cap of the tube and started to paint with abandon. Oh, the joy, oh, the fun, oh, the... Until they started to dry. Oh, make no mistake, these watercolors were the downfall of my artistic ambitions. Had I lost all my skill? What had happened to all my art school training? Why was my technique and my painting so terrible? To add to the horror, any attempt to blend these colors was a worthless endeavor, destined to transform into a sludge of mediocrity. And then I remembered one of the most important lessons about paints. You get what you pay for. Yes, 
What I was seeing were the fillers, additives, and other murky concoctions that created this monster. So heed my warning, artist friends. Stay far, far away from Reeves' watercolors, lest your paintings end up lost and forgotten at the bottom of the Black Lagoon. What happened to light? <gasps> Chapter 5. Broom and Bristle I know this tale will spark controversy, but the Windsor and Newton Series 7 brush is by far the witchiest I've ever owned. I came into possession of the Series 7 when my Da Vinci No. 2 decided it was ready to sing its untimely swan song. For 15 years, it had been by my side, and finally, I had to put it to rest. I use synthetic brushes for most of my work, but every so often, something lands on my desk that calls for me to change to something softer. That day at the shop, the Raphael, my preferred Kalinsky brush, was nowhere to be found, so I went with what I thought was the next best thing, the renowned Windsor and Newton Series 7, the crown jewel of Windsor and Newton's brush collection and favorite brush of Queen Victoria herself. But when I returned to the studio, it turned out that this brush had a fatal flaw. The tip would suddenly splay out like an evil twin and paint two lines instead of one. You never quite knew what you were going to get. The friendly and gentle Dr. Jekyll or the wrath of Mr. Hyde. It still sits silently on my desk, awaiting the day I accidentally reach for it. This thought weighs heavily on me and I keep waiting for the day where I reach for my favorite Da Vinci and instead a met with a horrifying doppelganger staring right back at me. Anyway, it's getting late. Ooh, all this talk of spooky art supplies is giving me the heebie-jeebies. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, subscribe! <laughs>